Good morning, Pedro. This morning, I want us to look at uh, the church in a different angle. I'm sure that uh, the churches of Christ all over the world are not deficient of good teachers and good lessons. But uh, it's unfortunate that uh, when it comes to implementation of what we are hearing day by day, it's always very difficult for many of us. The church, like we are sitting down this morning, is not a new subject to many of us. And I know that uh, when we refer to the church, we know what we mean in the universal sense of it. And when we are referring to a local congregation like we are sitting down this morning, it's not uh, any new thing to many of us. <clears throat> but my emphasis this morning will be limited to the local congregation, where we are. Like you listening to me, and I'm speaking before you today, congregated together, it's a church meeting in this locality. That is the area I want us to look from a different angle this morning. To have a better understanding of the points that I would like to stress, I want every one of us to look at the church as an individual person. Look at yourself uh, as a physical being sitting down today. Like I'm standing before you as a body. That is the way I want us to look at the church. Like a body of a person with many members. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, explained this subject extensively. And I will dwell on his explanation this morning. Let us open to the book of 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 12. Um, let's read verse 12 and 13 to start with. It says, For even as the body is one and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greek, whether slaves or free, and we were made to drink of one spirit. That is how Paul started to introduce the body of Christ, which is the church of Christ. In uh, verse 12 and 13, we were made to understand that the body of a man has many members. If you like, you could call these members organs that constitute the body. I have my own body, like you are having your own body. When we look at it in the physical realms, I am not part of your body. You are not part of my body. Within my body, there are many members. There are things that make a member be part of the body. Like I have my hand, I have my legs, I have my head, I have all the parts of my body. They become part of my body because they derive their livelihood from the same source within the body. The same thing your body. 
so also is the body of Christ. No one can become a member if you don't have something that is giving you a life, something that is keeping you alive from the same source, which is Jesus Christ, who is the head of the body. The church being referred to as the body of Christ. I want to say something at the beginning. That means the, the church being referred to as the body of Christ is not just a, a figure of speech. Many of us could be thinking that the, it's just used as a figure of speech. It, it goes beyond that. It's not a mere figure of speech. It is more than a mere figure of speech. We only need to look at the subject from the spiritual angle before we know what the relationship is a system between the church and Jesus Christ. Um, God takes this more seriously. Let us quickly look at the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse uh, 22, 23. And he put all things in subjection under his feet. That, and he gave him as head over all things to the church. That him there is Jesus Christ. I think we all know that. Which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Jesus is the head of the body. But in the body of Christ, which is the church, that is where you have the fullness of Christ that fills all in all. Without the body of Christ, no fullness of Christ here in this world. I want us to keep that. Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. <laughs> and he is also head of the body, which is the church. And he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that, in, so that he himself will come to have the first place in everything. Some other fashion will say, to have the preeminence in everything. That means the first place in everything to the church, Jesus is the focus, is the head, is the person who occupies the first place. The church can do nothing without Jesus Christ. I want us to keep that. Paul in verse 12 is explaining to us how our body with many members and still remain one body. So also is the body of Christ which is the church. When you read verse 13 it's very clear about how each of us became a member of this body, which is the church. This verse is referring to the church in the universal sense. I think we know that. Ephesians 12, 13, which says, For the body, for by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greek, whether slaves or free, and we were made to drink of one spirit. Whether here, whether in Canada, whether in South Africa, whether in Australia, whether New Zealand, if you are baptized and become a member of the Church of Christ, you are a member of that body. And that body universally is talking about the body of Christ in the universal realm. But wherever you were baptized, if you come to Dublin today, and you happen to become a member of this church, you have become a member of the body of Christ meeting locally in this area. And it's still the body of Christ, but in a local sense. That is the explanation here. So, verse 13 is very clear. 
about how each of us became a member of this body. The first is referring to the church in the universal sense, and it says, by one spirit. We were baptized into one body, through one spirit. From that spirit leads every one of us to baptism. And that baptism put us into one body. The book of John chapter 6, verse 63. John 6, 63. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Look at what verse 13 says. By one spirit, we were baptized into one body. And John is telling us here that it is the spirit that gives life. And that spirit is what? The word of God. So, what you got from the Spirit is the Word of God. And the Word of God is the Gospel of Jesus Christ, which you had, which I had, which converted me, which made me to believe in Jesus Christ. And if it is the same thing, the message that was preached by Peter on the day of Pentecost, if the same message was preached to you, which you believe, which I believe, what will happen is that it will put you and me in the same faith, in the same church, in the same body, which made us to congregate together today. That is why you don't see other congregations or other denominations meeting together to, with us because what they had was different from what you had. But what you had is what I had, and it, was, it is what brought us together to make us to become one body today in which you are a member and I'm a member. So that is the difference. So by that one spirit, we are baptized into one body and that one body we were baptized to is the church and Jesus Christ is the head of that church. So we have something in common. We are drinking from the same spirit. We are feeding from the same word of God. So we are related. That is how we become one body, a partaker of the same destiny. So no matter what you are, where you are, whom you are, if you heard the word of God and you believe and was baptized in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit into Christ, you are baptized into his body, which is the church. And when we congregate together in a local place, we are the body of Christ in that locality. So around here, we are the body of Christ. Jesus is the head of this church. But when we look deeply into the letter of Paul in this First Corinthians chapter 12, there are some things we can bring out there. We could deduce three sets of people that were present in the church at Corinth. I don't know whether they are present here today, but let me tell you, everything that happened in Corinth continues to happen in every church of Christ today. So we have three sets of people, or let me say three sets of situations that were present in the church at Corinth. Number one, some are there who think they are less important in the church. Number two, some were there who think they are more important in the church. And number three, there were some in the church of Corinth that, should, that the church should see as very important. I think I'm getting, being cleared. There were some in the church 
that look at themselves as not being relevant. Whether they are there, they don't think they were missed, or no, the church will not miss them. There were some there that think they were more important than others. They look at some people that, if they are not there, if I'm there, things will still be okay. But in the letter of Paul, there are some that the church will see as more important within the congregation. But before I go into that, I do that analysis, I still want us to keep something. I would like to make more emphasis on the importance of the church as the body of Christ in the locality. The church, where you are sitting, there are congregation together this morning. Many of us may not think that way, but it is, far, it is the facts. It constitutes the means by which Christ functions. This church is the means by which Christ can function in this locality. Christ is not coming back from heaven again and walk on the street to convert souls or to do any good work. He can only do that through his body, which is church that is located in this community today. So, as the head can do nothing without the body, and the body can do nothing without the head. John chapter 15, verse 5. Let's see that. It says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. There is nothing we can do if we are not in Christ. Don't be surprised again. Christ can do nothing right here today without the church. I'm not been saying that Christ has no power. But all he can do, if he refuse to do, all Christ can do is to set up another church. Who will do the work we're supposed to do? That's what he can do. He's not coming back from heaven to do what he has done 2,000 years ago. That time he came physically. He did the preaching by himself. But now he's not going to do that. If this church will not perform, the worst he can do is to get another set of people that are ready to do his work. So I want us to keep that. So, as God designed it, we can do nothing without the head, which is Christ. And Christ has the head to the body could not function in this local area without the church air. Because this church is the body of Christ here in this locality. Which means, by staying here doing nothing, in this locality, we are hindering the work of Christ in this local area. If I am a member of this church, sitting here today, and doing nothing, I will be hindering the work of Christ around here. That's what we are doing. And that is the facts. Now, let us move to consider the three sets of people in the church. First Corinthians chapter 12. I want to read verse 14 to 16. Paul says, For the body is not one member, but many members. Like the church here is not one member. We have many members. Each one of us is a member. If the, body, if the food says, because I am not a hand, I am not a part of the body, is it not for this reason, is it not for this reason, any the less a part of the body? It is possible for the food to say, well, I'm hungry, I don't want to belong to the body. Even when it is cut off. 
Is it not still part of a body? It's still the part of the body. It could get rotten, but it's still the part of your body. And if the hair says, because I'm not an eye, I'm not a part of the body, is it not for this reason? Any, the less part of the body, it's not possible. It's still part of the body. So if we have some people sitting down today and say, well, because I cannot teach, because I cannot lead in the Lord's Supper, because I cannot lead in the collection, whether I'm there, it does not really matter. Does that make you not part of this body? Whatever you do, or whatever you cannot do, since you have been baptized and become the member of the Church of Christ, and you are congregating together with us here, you are still a part of this body. It is left to you to make yourself useful for the body, for the progress of the body, or you make yourself useless and cause problems for the body. Because if the hand is useless, what is it doing to the body? It's causing more problems for the body. That's just it. You cannot say because, well, I'm not useful, I'm not part of the body. That is the explanation Paul is giving here. Which means in the church at Corinth, some people could be thinking in this way. I don't know whether we have them in our midst. Some people could be thinking that way. Well, if I come, good. If I don't come, it doesn't stop the church from growing. Your coming means something. Your not coming means many. Your doing means something. Your not doing also means something. Because whether you like it or not, you are part of the body. That is what Paul is saying. Which means by staying here, doing nothing in this locality, like I said before, we are hindering the work of the church. Okay? Although What Paul was discussing here has things to do with spiritual gifts. But it can be applied physically like I'm trying to look at it from the another angle. But the truth is that the role of a foot is different from the role of a hand. If either of them is missing, then the body is not complete. I think you agree with me. What the leg will do is different from what the hand will do. What the, hand, what, what the eyes will do is different from what the mouth will do. If any of them is missing, then you don't have a body. What you have is a defected body. It's not a whole body anymore. So that is it. Even your fingernail, if it's removed, if it's, if it's not there, the body is not complete. So a member could be as tiny as the fingernail, but is still part of the body. A member can be insignificant here. He can look at himself as insignificant. But to God, everyone is significant. And you are a part of the body, you have a role to play. And by coming, you are, have, you are playing your role to make sure that the body is solidly whole. Okay? If either of them is missing, then the body is not complete. Both are very important parts of the body. But when jealousy sets in, and the foot could work against the hand, and the hand could work against the foot, then who will suffer? The body will suffer. Like we are here today, if we allow jealousy to set in our midst, before you know it, we start to work against one another. And what the result will be is that this body will suffer. And it's not limited to this body. If this body is suffering, Jesus is not comfortable over there because it's the head. If you have a small cut in your hand and it's painful to you, it goes through your whole body. The head will not know what it's doing. 
you may be sick and sit down at home. It is, it, the sickness can be caused by just a tiny thing, a tiny member of your body. So also is what we are doing to Jesus Christ by not doing what we ought to do as a member of the congregation of Christ. We should have that in mind. That is what, that is the damage we are doing to Jesus Christ. The first set of people here that are complaining in this chapter, uh, verse 14 to 17 are those who think they are not or they are less important in the congregation. Since they don't believe they are significant, they feel that they are not means, where they are not doing their, own, their part of the, of the body. That is why he says, if the fool should say, I am not a hand, I am not a part of the body. So some are taking the back seat. After all, I am not the teacher. I am not the preacher. The work will be done by the preacher. We come here every day, we see this on the table. We see the floor, everywhere is neat. We don't know how it, goes, how it, how, how it got done. We are complacent. We think things are okay. We don't know that some people are doing it. And we don't want to know that some people are doing it. We think we are not, if I come late, it doesn't matter. That is what we are saying. And that is wrong. You have to catch yourself as being important, a bona fide member of the body that we make the body to grow. Nobody is going to force you, but you have to have, feel responsible yourself. I have to feel responsible myself. That, what, that is what makes the body of Christ grow. So, that is the first set of people. You know what is making some members to think in this way? Some have a, an, an erroneous notion, thinking that by coming or by performing one function or the other is the work of the church. It's part of the work of the church, but it's not really the work of the church. The work of the church goes beyond coming here, setting tables, teaching here, or doing one thing or the other. Why did I say that? If you are coming to the church every Sunday, every Wednesday, coming and learning and doing what we need to do here, I'm not really sure you are a Christian. Why? The reason is because our coming here to learn the word of God, to worship God, to reform ourselves, is to prepare us for the task out there. If I'm coming to the church every day and my life is not impacting the people outside, who knows that I'm a Christian? How many hours are we spending together here? Just two hours at the maximum. If your Christianity is only within the two hours, are you no more, are you better than an hypocrite? So we are not Christians. It's like a student that is going to school every day, learning every day, all over the years, but what you are learning, you don't put it in practice. Is, is that, what have you gained? Somebody who went to, to driving school, you learned the rules on the road, you learn how to drive, everything, you have done everything perfectly, but you never go into a car one day and drive. Are you a driver? No, you are not a driver. So if you are coming every day and learning the word of God here every day, and what you are learning, there is no way to implement it. I'm sure you cannot implement it within this all. Because it is good, for, we, we know every, every one of us know how to pretend when we come in here. We, 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 we do as if we are the best in the world, just for two hours. Many of well, when we go out, we do other things. That is not Christianity. The work of the church is what you do out there. Because what you do out there will make the world to know who you are. And from what, and from what you are, they know 
who Christ is. Christ is not coming down to come and defend himself now. You are the one to defend Jesus Christ out there. What I do, what is going to defend Jesus Christ out there, to know the type of person Jesus is, is what we do. So, the work of the church and the work of Christianity is really outside when you are in the world. I will give you an example. Before I know this congregation, I was coming, I, I was coming to locate the address here. I came from Island Bridge that one Sunday. I was at work. I told those uh, working together with me, I said, please, I want to locate an address around here. When I came, I went to that shopping mall there. I entered one shop. I asked the shop attendant, please, do you know where the Church of Christ is meeting here? The lady said, ah, no, she doesn't know. Then somebody who came to buy said, look, Mr. Uh, church, you said Church of Christ? I said, yes. Say, is it where they used to meet and discuss about, about the uh, Bible? I said, yes, that must be the place. Then the person described this place to me. That is how I located the address. Do you ever know that person? No. I don't know him. But people around here, are watching us every day. They are looking at us. The public are noticing us. Don't, don't, don't ever believe that as we are driving in, coming out, that the world is not knowing what we are doing here. That person is not a member, but he knows what we are doing here. So that is how our life um, used to be. That is how, why we have to be very careful. So let's go to the second set of people in the, in the congregation. Those who believe they know everything and they don't need some other people. Verse 17 to 20. He said, If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were Hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But now God has placed the num member, each one of them, in the body just as he desire. If they were not all one member, where would be the body? But now there are many members, but one body. An eye, and the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, it is much truer that the members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. Okay? This is likened to those who think they are more important. Some of them think that if somebody did not do anything, or they don't need some people to make the church going, that is a wrong notion. That is why he says, and I cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Even if a member is here very weak, it's not doing well. We continue to labor on him or her every day. He's still needed in the congregation. Such member is still important. You may not know. In our congregation in Nigeria, there was a period of time that the tension was so high. There were bickering here and there. Every teacher coming up. You know, it is the mood of the church that people will come up to teach about. They were throwing different teachings at each other, here and there, here and there. We thought everything was in a very messy situation. But something good came out of it. Those who could not stand, they left. But those who, who withstood that stormy 
period, they came out stronger. I want to tell you that there is no congregation I go today that I will look at a person as my model of faith. I don't look at a person and say, whatever happened, if the, this house is falling today, I'm not boasting. I still hold on to Christ. Because it has made me to become strong, not looking at those who converted me, not looking at the preacher, not looking at those that I think, that you may think are strong in the church. Because people can fall, people can rise. It's only Christ that cannot fall. So it was that terrible condition that molded most of us to, to, to be stronger. So you have some situation in the church, like what happened to us recently. Those who withstood it and stand, will stand and stand forever. So, because the body is the body of Christ, because the church is the church of Christ, whatever situation that is going on in the body, Jesus knows about it. And there was a reason for everything that happened. It may be for a member. It may be for just a member of the body to pass through that, pro, that trial and come out better. So every member is important. And there's nobody that is not important. We shouldn't have that mind. But I will quickly rush to the third point because that is where I really want us to lay more emphasis. Now the third set of people which I say, which I call most important is the church. Those the church must watch with an eagle high. There are members that the church as a whole to watch with an eagle high. They are this we can see from verse 23, 24. 23, 24 say, and those members of the body which we deem less honorable, on this we bestow more abundant honor. And our less presentable members become much more presentable. Whereas our more presentable members have no need of it. But God has so composed the body, giving more abundant honor to that member which lacked. Look at me as I'm standing today. My hand is visible. You can see my leg outside. There are some things I covered, which I think should not be exposed. We call it our private parts. We don't want to go naked. Because of what? Because when we go naked, the world will see our nakedness. And when the world see our nakedness, what do you think it's saying? It makes us to be ashamed. It brings shame unto us. So also are some members in the congregation. They are all in every congregation. There are some members that you need to watch very well. Because if you don't watch them, they can make the church go naked out there. They can disgrace, they can bring shame to the church. Paul is not saying we should drive them out. But you must protect them. You must give them special care. You must nurture them. You must watch over them. You must be closer to them. Steve can go anywhere. I will have rest of mind. I will not care. Because I know it will behave well. So members can go anywhere. The church will go and rest and say, no, 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 it's, it's okay. But there are some members that you find in a place that you will not be comfortable. They are not disgracing themselves but they are disgracing the body. They are disgracing the church. We must watch those members. That is why we must be a brother's keeper. We have youths that are not well stable because of the tires of this world. This world we live in. There are so many temptations, especially the youths are more vulnerable. The new, the new converts, the weak among us, we should not think that all is well with them. The church needs to have a program. 
that will bring members close to this set of people. We must keep an eagle eye on them. Because when they mess up out there, they tarnish the image of the church. Those are the little, little parts of the body that requires special protection. And don't, don't let us pretend that we don't have them. We have them around us. Do you know that just a phone call to a brother during the week can prevent that brother from committing a sin? Do you know that just a knock at the door of a brother can do wonder to that brother for that week? That is why God set up the church so that we can watch one another and help one, and help one another to do the will of God. If we neglect in this responsibility, well, you can say I'm okay. I've never committed a sin. But if another brother is doing it, who's supposed to be under your watch? I don't know whether you are not culpable. I'm not sure. Because God will require their blood from you. That is why you are here. That is why I'm here. To be a brother's keeper, to watch over once, watch all our, watch over our souls, so that we can jointly please God and make the church uh, to be holy, like God and Jesus we want is. So, like I said, we have members or part of the body of Christ that could bring shame to the body. Therefore. Paul wants us to identify these members and treat them with care. The youths, the poor, the newly baptized, and the weak. We must be close to them. We must give them special attention. They are more vulnerable. Anyone that behaves like the unbelievers, like people who do not know God among us, has brought shame to the church. He has brought shame to the body. And Jesus will not be comfortable because he's the head of the body. It pains him over there. And he's not happy. So, we should keep those things in mind. Verse 25, just to rush down. So that they... So that